Welcome back, everybody. We're going to turn our attention here to another fairly common thing that you'll run into, and that is fibromyalgia, a very poorly understood uh, disease that affects a lot of people and is really, really, really problematic as far as their quality of life. So this is an important one to understand. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button on the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And definitely feel free to subscribe to my channel and you will get updates as I put more and more videos up. All right, so what is fibromyalgia? It is a non-inflammatory chronic pain disorder that's strongly associated with fatigue and neuropsychiatric manifestations. So this is chronic pain. That is how it presents. These patients come in saying, I just hurt. I hurt everywhere and I hurt all the time and I don't know why it's all over. I don't know what's going on. They're also going to tell you they're tired. They may not be able to sleep at night. Maybe the pain is keeping them up or when they do sleep, they just don't feel refreshed. Uh, but look for pain and fatigue. Now, those are fairly nonspecific, and that is what makes this difficult to diagnose and, in fact, is kind of a diagnosis of exclusion. We don't know why it happens. It affects about 1 in 50 people in the United States. Like I said, it's pain, it's fatigue, it's sleep problems, and a lot of times they also have psych issues. So look for mood disturbances, anxiety, maybe a history of abuse, of PTSD, or something like that. They may also have other somatic disorders that we associate with psychiatric comorbidities, like irritable bowel syndrome or overactive bladder. And when I say psychiatric, I'm not saying this is in their head. Okay, I'm just saying there is an association with psychiatric disorders. There's a higher incidence in those suffering from other autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and Sjogren's and polymyalgia rheumatica. Um, so that lends some credence that there is some sort of physical mechanism going on here. Average age of presentation is about 30 years. It is way more common in women than in men, about 9 to 1. So usually diagnosis of exclusion, patients often going to come in saying, I'm hurting all over. I feel like I always have the flu because of the my myalgia. We see that in flu. Uh, persistent fatigue, fatigue that just doesn't get better. Even if they sleep a lot on the weekends, it just does not get any better. Remember, when you've got a patient that is tired, even though they're sleeping, first thing you need to think of is obstructive sleep apnea. Um, so a lot of these patients, if they're complaining about this stuff, will probably go in for a sleep study first. Remember, this is a diagnosis of exclusion. A uh, patient will often appear tired, dark, sunken eyes, just um, not looking good. Uh, the pain is elicited from these characteristic pressure points. And uh, you may also hear these called trigger points. Uh, but uh, what these are are areas where these patients with fibromyalgia tend to be very, very sensitive. And this is probably the closest to a specific test that we have, and that's not saying much. The diagnosis here is entirely clinical. However, there are labs that you'll want to get. So if we're talking about a patient who's chronically fatigued, absolutely, you're going to be getting a TSH, possibly a sleep study. If you've got a patient who has, uh, you know, this chronic musculoskeletal pain, yes, you're going to get a rheumatoid factor and ANA working them up for uh, rheumatologic joint conditions. These are your trigger points. So you can see that there are um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we have all of them here. Yeah, nine. Okay. So there's nine. They're shown here, but they're just shown on one side. So there's a total of 18. Okay. So um, as far as your workup, you want to get routine labs. Um, get a SED rate. We're looking for the possibility of inflammation. This is not inflammatory, but we have to rule other things out. Get a rheumatoid factor, anti-CCP. That's going to help you rule out RA. Remember, this presents in young women, so we got to keep that in mind. Uh, ANA, creatine kinase, looking for the possibility of a myositis, and then a TSH. And everything's going to be normal. That's typical for fibromyalgia. Now, like I said, they can have coexisting uh, autoimmune disorders, so they may have fibromyalgia in addition to RA or in addition to lupus or in addition to Sjogren's or in addition to polymyositis, um, and that can make things difficult. I wouldn't expect to see such a complicated case on your exam, but in real life, watch out. 
So what you have to have to diagnose fibromyalgia is widespread pain for more than three months, and they need to have pain at 11 or more of these trigger points. Differential diagnosis. RA, these are patients who are going to have actual swelling. This is an inflammatory joint disease. Um, they will likely have constitutional features, possibly a fever. You would never see that in uh in fibromyalgia, and then look for that positive rheumatoid factor, positive anti-CCP. Lupus, look for a malar discoid rash. Um, this fibromyalgia is never going to give you a rash, and then look for a positive ANA. Chronic fatigue syndrome, lots of overlap here. CFS can have a little bit of pain. Fibromyalgia can have a little bit of fatigue, but with CFS, fatigue is going to be more predominant. The pain, not so much. Osteoarthritis, look for an older person. Uh, pain at the joints primarily rather than at trigger points. Get an x-ray. Uh, this is just a different patient population. Ankylosing spondylitis tends to be young men. It's mostly lower back pain that improves with use. Um, they may have more than an hour of morning stiffness and it gets better. Polymyalgia rheumatica. This tends to be older people, more acute onset. Look for elevated sed rate. Hypothyroidism. Oh, by the way, ankylosing spondylitis. Look for bamboo spine. Okay. Hypothyroidism, look for weight gain, goiter, cold intolerance, more systemic features, high TSH. Myositis, this is more weakness rather than pain. Uh, these patients, polymyositis, dermatomyositis, uh, they have a hard time with their proximal uh, uh, limb muscles and neck muscles, so they're going to have a hard time going up the steps, getting up from a seated position, uh, lifting their comb over their head. Dermatomyositis will also have a rash. So the treatment for fibromyalgia is centered both towards the cause of their pain and towards cognitive behavioral changes that can reduce any underlying triggers. Um, so the drug we typically go for is amitriptyline, which is a tricyclic antidepressant. Other drugs, though, can be used in place of or in addition to amitriptyline. Usually we are treating with more than one drug, but this is the best one to start out with. NSAIDs and opioids are always the wrong answer. We don't want to use opioids because of their addictive potential. This is a chronic condition. Um, and we don't want to use NSAIDs because this is not inflammatory. You want to reassure the patient, this is fibromyalgia. It is a real physical diagnosis. It's not in your head. There is a psychiatric component, though. So seeing psychiatry or seeing a therapist can be very useful, uh, especially if you have any kind of psychiatric comorbidities like PTSD or generalized anxiety or whatever. Um, and so addressing the psychiatric slash mental health component is going to optimize the treatment plan, which includes medication. Regular exercise is absolutely beneficial. So the management in a patient with fibromyalgia I would start with amitriptyline, reassure the patient, refer them to psych and behavioral therapy, counsel them about regular exercise, and then manage any underlying uh, comorbid condition if present. So to recap, this is non-inflammatory chronic pain disorder that's strongly associated with fatigue and neuropsych manifestations, usually a young woman in her 30s with ongoing pain and fatigue. Uh, the most specific findings are pain at the trigger points. This is a diagnosis of exclusion, but keep an eye out for inflammatory symptoms uh, because that could lead you in a different direction. Musculoskeletal pain, you got to keep the differential of osteoarthritis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, ankylosing spondylitis, PMR, and myositis. So look for those inflammatory um, diseases, rule those out. And then with intractable severe fatigue, look for hypothyroidism, obstructive sleep apnea, and chronic fatigue syndrome. And then the, the treatment is pharmacotherapy, start with amitriptyline, refer them to psych, refer them for CBT, and manage any underlying conditions.